while they slept in their beds. Serial killer, mass murder, these terms were not common phrases in the early 1900s. This small town certainly did not have these terms whispered throughout the bustling streets. Viliska meaning, pretty place, was a small town that was expanding with small business, mom and pop shops and citizens lining the streets. It grew to a population of 2,500. On June 10, 1912, everything changed. The safe feeling of the people that called Viliska their safe and quiet place was shattered. Josiah and Sarah Moore were married on December 6, 1899 at the home of Sarah's parents, living a decent life, with their four young children, Herman, 11, Catherine, 10, Boyd, 7 and Paul, 5. Josiah being a prominent businessman in the small town of Viliska, he was well known by everyone. Sarah was very involved with their local church and taught the Sunday lessons to the kids. Viliska was about to be a part of one of history's greatest mysteries. On June 9, 1912, after lesson were done with the kids at church, Catherine Moore asked permission for the Stillinger sisters, Lena, 12 and Ina, 8, that were close friends of Catherine's, to spend the night at the Moore's home. The girls' parents all agreed to the sleepover. After an evening of children's laughter and play, the house eventually grew quiet of footsteps and giggles as the Moores and all six children went to sleep for the night. June 10, 1912, Mary Peckham, the Moore's neighbor, had stepped outside to hang laundry to dry. She noted that the Moore's house was still quiet in the early morning. Sometime between 7 a.m. 8 a.m., Mary grew concerned enough to place a phone call to Josiah's brother, Ross Moore. She requested that he may check on his family. This phone call set off one of the most infamous hunts for a killer or killers in history. When Ross Moore used his key to enter the home of his brother on the morning of June 10, he wasn't prepared for what he found. He slowly walked to a room just off the front parlor, squeaking the door open. He saw two bodies on the beds. Blood stains covered the blankets of Lena and her sister Ina Stillinger, the two girls that had come for a sleepover. During the night of the 9th June 10, 1912, authorities say, between 12 a.m. and 5 a.m., someone had broken into the Moore's home and committed the unspeakable crime. The bodies of Josiah and Sarah, plus their four children were found in the upstairs bedrooms, all six had been hacked viciously with an axe while they slept in their beds. The children, one by one, were killed brutally while they slept, their skulls crushed, their small bodies battered. I think it is believed that Lena had been sexually assaulted, as her nightgown was found pushed up and she had no underwear on. The murder weapon, bloody and wiped off, was found in the downstairs bedroom where Lena and Ina had gone to sleep. The axe belonged to Josiah Moore. The doors were locked with a key to the home. A pan of bloody water was discovered on the kitchen table. Although there have been many whispers sent out and plenty of speculation about who, what and why around the small, tight-knit town, the axe murders of Villisca, Iowa have never been solved. The perpetrators of this horror story are most likely dead now. Today, the axe murders, and the house it happened in, have become very famous. You can take a tour of the very home where this tragedy took place. It holds on to its secrets, to this day. Another famous axe murder you may be familiar with was that of Lizzie Borden. In Fall River, Massachusetts, she hacked her father Andrew and stepmother Abby to death in 1892 with an axe. Andrew Borden, a prominent banker and mill owner, was killed and his body found in the parlor of his house. The body of his wife, Abby Borden, was found about 30 minutes later in an upstairs guest room. According to police, she was a bitter, jealous daughter who hated her stepmother and killed her father to prevent him from changing his will to benefit his wife, and not Lizzie. Although being charged with the murders and facing a jury of her peers, Lizzie was acquitted of her charges. Lizzie was even able to gather a fan base with her charm and wit. She always maintained her innocence. To this day, Borden remains the prime suspect in her father's and stepmother's murders. Lizzie continued to live in the home she killed in, and died of pneumonia on June 1, 1927, in Fall River. Funeral details were not published and few attended. She was 66. On the day Lizzie died, Emma, her sister, 
living life in New Hampshire, fell and broke her hip, she died 12 days later.